Star Walker Studios presents Game Master's Journey, your multi-dimensional RPG podcast. Published RPG campaigns can be a great resource for GMs with busy lives. However, my experiences with them has taught me that they have a lot of drawbacks. Today, I set off again on the Obsidian Monolith to share my experiences with published campaigns and why I now feel they're not for me. I also explore my other options in the search for that ever-elusive sweet spot. So join me on the journey. Together, we can become Game Masters truly worthy of the title. Hello listener, greetings fellow GM and or player. Welcome to episode 55 of Game Master's Journey, your multi-dimensional RPG podcast. I'm your host Lex Starwalker and I'm transmitting to you today from the Obsidian Monolith somewhere outside time and space. Now, I've mentioned on the last couple episodes of the show how I recently lost steam with my Tyranny of Dragons campaign for D&D, which is a published D&D campaign. And I had a similar experience with The Devil's Spine, which was a published campaign for Numenera. And basically, you know, in a nutshell, the experience is I, I get this published campaign. I'm really excited about it, really excited to run it. We start playing it. Everything's going great, and then gradually, as the campaign goes on, usually it seems to happen about halfway through, I just start getting bored with it, and I start feeling very confined and constrained by this written series of adventures that I've committed myself and my group to getting through. The Devil Spine group actually ended up kind of falling apart, and we got, I think we got about three quarters of the way through the campaign, and there were various things involved, various scheduling issues and stuff like that, but I really believe that a big part of it was that I personally was just not wanting to do it anymore. I was really bored with the adventure. I was really sick of doing it. And, you know, things that when I first got it seemed like really cool now seemed pretty contrived. And I just was tired of telling that story. And I I wanted to do something else. And I had a very similar experience with Tyranny of Dragons. And the interesting thing about Tyranny of Dragons is I actually think that the second half of the campaign is a lot better than the first half. The first half is very linear. It's very kind of leading the players by the nose through the whole thing and you know the second part is still ultimately very linear you know the the pcs have some options as far as what order to do things but they're still going to do a b c and d before they get to g kind of thing they might just do them in a slightly different order But it's interesting because I've been really excited to run the second half of the campaign, especially, you know, in the early days and especially the the end of the campaign, which is pretty epic. But despite that, by the time I'd slogged through the first half of the campaign, I was kind of had enough of it, at least for now. So, you know, this is something that, that's happened twice for me um, with the two, you know, longer kind of published campaigns that I've tried to run. So, you know, it's only two data points, but so far, 100%, every time I try to run one of these published campaigns, uh, it becomes painful long before I get to the end. And your gaming experience should never be painful, right? We do this for fun. It's a hobby. Now, very recently, I was reading some reviews and discussion of Wizards of the Coast's new D&D campaign supplement, Out of the Abyss, and parts of what I was reading about it sounded really cool. You know, some of the things that they're doing with the Underdark and whatnot sounded kind of cool. And I've been kicking around the idea myself of running my own Underdark campaign. I even came up with a couple Dark Elf specific backgrounds for it. I was going to do a campaign in uh, Menzo Branzan and 
have the players be noble dark elves in a an up and coming family and and play with uh play with that and uh i'm still kind of excited about that idea we'll probably do it someday so with all that in mind I was really surprised when I realized reading these reviews of Out of the Abyss that I have zero desire to run Out of the Abyss. And this was just an eye-opening experience for me because I was expecting to want to run it. And I was even a little reluctant to read stuff about it because I was like, as soon as I read about it, I'm going to I'm gonna want this thing and I'm going to want to get this book. And, you know, I already have campaigns I'm running and I don't have time for another campaign and you know there's nothing worse for your D&D campaign than to find or get a new idea for a D&D campaign that you're really excited about and then suddenly the old campaign seems less exciting so I was a little reluctant for those reasons to even learn anything about it and then when I did and, and even though I'm thinking yeah a lot of this sounds pretty cool I found myself just thinking but I don't want it. I don't want to run this. <laughs> so, you know, that just led to to a whole slew of thoughts and realizations about myself and, and what's been going on with my gaming lately. Now, I talked about Wizards design and kind of product release strategy for fifth edition in episode 24 of this show. And I'll have that linked in the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com. If you want to go check that out and listen to that, um, it's called The Future of Dungeons and Dragons. And it was in response to an article I read online with uh, somebody from Wizards. I, I don't remember who, and I'm not going to go check because it doesn't really, it's not important. <laughs> but the article was about kind of their their strategy for how they're doing fifth edition and how, you know, unlike third edition and fourth edition, they're not going to do, or at least at the time they were saying, they're not going to do like splat books. You know, there's not going to be the complete barbarian book and the complete bard book and the complete book of elves and the complete this and that and the other thing, you know, which I and I think a lot of other gamers were very happy to hear because we're all kind of tired of you know, this just cranking out all these splat books and then you deal with rules blow and system creep and all this stuff. And yeah, you know, I'm very happy to hear about that. And instead what they're basically planning to do, or again, what they were saying at the time, because they've then they've since released a survey very recently uh, that makes me wonder if they're considering going back on this idea and going back to the splat books. Because one of the questions in the survey was, you know what kind of supplements would you like and they had splat books in there um, which to me at least says that they're considering the possibility of doing that even though they've said that they weren't going to do that <laughs> so what they are doing or what they've said they were going to do is instead of doing that they you know once or twice or a few times a year release these campaigns so first we had tyranny of dragons then we had the elemental evil one princes of the apocalypse and now we have out of the abyss and the idea is they release a campaign or what in pathfinder would be called an adventure path a you know single hardback book that's an adventure that takes you from like level one to level 15 or so and then along with that they may release some new rules and options for the game so with Princes of the Apocalypse, for instance, they released a free companion player PDF on their website. And uh, yeah, good luck finding it. Their website's so terrible. But they they released that and that had some, uh, I think it had a couple new backgrounds. It had the Genasi, which are elemental based races that, that PCs can play, had some new elemental themed spells and stuff like that. So at the time that I did episode 24 and I was talking about all that, I thought that was a really cool idea and I was a big fan of it. Um, you know, instead of just putting out all these random books of new rules and new things you can do, instead tying it to a specific story in a specific setting and saying, well, hey, if you're doing Princes of the Apocalypse, here's some things that you can use in that campaign, additional rules and stuff 
But if you're not doing Princess of the Apocalypse, you know, you don't need to use this. I mean, you can. You can open up the Genasi for your players for whatever campaign you're running. But you don't have to. And and there's not even this kind of unspoken kind of like, oh, this is part of the game now. And, and this will be a standard option to anybody making characters. And, and players are just going to assume when making a D&D character that they can be a fire Genasi. Right. I, I don't think that is the assumption right now because that was a supplement for this specific campaign. Right. So I like that. I thought that was cool. However, now, after I've had these kind of realizations right, lately, um, I now realize that there's a massive flaw in this plan. And maybe that's why they're surveying and, and seeing you know, what we want. Maybe Wizards is starting to think, hey, maybe this wasn't such a great idea or maybe we're, we can't sustain this as the only thing we're doing with D&D. I don't know. That's just speculation. But mainly the, the flaw is since I personally, like Starwalker, don't want to run out of the abyss. I don't want to spend that kind of money for a book where I'm going to use maybe a handful of pages that might be might be useful to me. And that's assuming that in that book there's going to be some rules or maybe some setting information on the underdark that I'm really going to like and find useful and use in my dark elf thing I want to do and that there actually will be something of use to me in that book if I'm not running the campaign. So I don't want to buy a book where there's easily going to be 75% of it or more that's of no use to me, namely a series of adventures I don't want to run. And even if I hadn't come to this recent realization that I just don't want to do published campaigns anymore, even if I was open to that, A, I'm not going to have time to run every campaign they put out. Even if they only do one or two a year, I'm not going to have time to do every one, right? And again, if I'm not running... For instance, Princess of the Apocalypse, I, I didn't buy it. I'm not going to buy it. There's no reason for me to buy it because I'm not ever going to run it. So why would I buy it? And so, you know, there's kind of a problem there if you're trying to make money <laughs> publishing RPG books. If, you know, right out the gate, this book you put out, there's going to be a lot of GMs that aren't going to be interested because either they don't run published stuff or they don't run published campaigns. They just do single adventures or they're just not going to run that particular one right now something that they're doing differently with this new campaign is they are i think last i heard they're putting out a supplement as a companion to it that's some kind of like player's guide to the sword coast or some shit like that um that will have i think some some new backgrounds and and things like that it's kind of a combination the way i understand it of some setting information about the sword coast and also some more player options for playing characters from that region. And so I assume that's why we didn't get a free PDF companion to Out of the Abyss with the rules and stuff for players. At least I'm, I'm assuming there's not one. Again, their website is terrible. So it could be there and I just can't find it because their website sucks so bad. So again, I've decided that for me, adventure paths or published campaigns or whatever you want to call them are not the way to go. And again, this is just my personal thing, but uh, we talked quite a bit about adventure paths or published campaign. I'm just going to call them published campaigns because adventure paths is a specific Pathfinder thing. Like that's branded. That's their thing. So we'll call it published campaign because that works for any game. We've talked about that on the show before. I had Will Johnson on. We did like three episodes about it there. And I've talked about it here and there in other episodes of the show. So I thought it makes sense now that I've decided I'm not doing them anymore to talk about why and kind of my thoughts about it and see what you have to say. So the first reason that I'm not doing published campaigns anymore is by necessity, the campaign focuses on everything except the PCs. Things like the setting, NPCs, the events and plot of the adventures, things like that. Now, I think as a campaign progresses through time, it should more and more focus on the PCs and the consequences of their actions up to that point or their inactions, right? Part of the fun for me of playing an RPG is seeing my character's effect on the world around me and seeing, you know, having things happen because of something I did way back when or something I didn't do. Whole adventures can and do arise from the unexpected things that the PCs do. And I've never run a campaign of, of my own design 
where it ended, you know, exactly the way I thought it would end. And every campaign I've run in the past, things have happened and we've had whole adventures and series of adventures that I would have never guessed were going to happen in the beginning, just because you don't know what the players are going to do and where that's going to take you as a group. So a published campaign kind of makes this pretty much impossible or at the very least exceedingly difficult. If you do manage to focus the campaign on the PCs, chances are good you're going to diverge more and more from the published campaign as you go. So this could result in you never using a large quantity of the published material that you bought. And that's a problem when you're basically paying by the page, right? I mean, there's a direct relationship between the price of a book, especially an RPG book that's, you know, got color illustrations and stuff like that. There's a direct relationship between or correlation between the number of pages and the price. The more pages, the more it costs. So bearing that in mind, to buy a book and then not use half of it is not very cost effective for me as a consumer or a gamer. You know, I could have bought another book that I would use the whole thing, right? Like maybe a setting book or a core book for a new game or something. So yeah, I I see that as a major problem with published campaigns. And I think that's one of the big reasons why I lose interest in them is because I'm becoming more and more interested in the stories that are evolving around the player characters and things going on with them that have nothing to do with this uber plot of the campaign I'm trying to run. And I'd rather come up with adventures about that and explore that than continue slogging through this story that I already know how it's gonna end. Another reason the published campaigns really aren't working for me these days is even the greatest ideas can get really tiresome after a long time, right? So published campaigns, at least how they exist in Pathfinder and D&D, take forever to run. You're talking months of real world time up to and often exceeding a year of real world time to get through one of these campaigns. And that's if your group can manage to meet weekly for a decent amount of time. If you're only able to meet for a couple hours or if maybe you play only once or twice a month or even more infrequently, chances are really good, honestly, that you're never gonna finish that campaign. Because first of all, if you did finish it, it would probably take well over a year, maybe two years or more. And for all these reasons that, that I'm talking about in this episode, you're all gonna get sick of it way before two years goes by, right? And you're gonna end up doing something else or the group's gonna break up or something. And, you know, speaking of of wizard surveys, which, you know, they're they're crowdsourcing in, in a good way, I think, overall. But one of their recent surveys, they ask, you know, they always ask, you know, what's the highest level character you've played in fifth edition? What's the highest level characters you've DM'd for? And they asked about the two campaigns, Princes of the Apocalypse and Tyranny of Dragons. They asked if you played it and how far you got, whether or not you finished it. And I suspect, you know, they don't, you know, necessarily share these numbers with us. I I wish they would, but I would suspect that they're going to see that more than 50% of the people who play these campaigns don't finish them, which I think is part of what they're trying to get at with that. You know, is it really cost effective for us as a company to put out these products when the majority of people never finish them? We'd be better off making shorter adventures, right? That maybe you can chain together. Now, a long campaign in and of itself isn't a bad thing. In fact, I prefer them. Like, I don't like one shots. I don't like little like, oh, we're going to do this campaign. that's going to take like four gaming sessions. Like, you know, it's, it's like my reading habits. You know, once in a while I can get into a short story or a novella or something like that, but I'd much rather read a novel. If I'm gonna sit down to read, I want to get to know the characters. I want to see character arcs and character development. And I mean, beyond that, I prefer series of novels, right? You know, it's rare that I read a novel that's just all by itself standalone novel. Almost every book I read is part of at least a trilogy, if not longer. Right. So I'm kind of the same way with my gaming. You know, a campaign's like reading a novel or a series of novel as opposed to a one shot would be like a short story or even a flash fiction might be even shorter than a short story, depending how long your gaming sessions are. 
So I like long campaigns, but a long rigid campaign that can't adapt to the players and their decisions quickly becomes a tiresome affair. Also, and, and I already kind of touched on this, unlike the players, you as the GM know how the story ends from the very beginning. So what may at first seem like an exciting conclusion you can't wait to run, like in Tyranny of Dragons, can you lose its luster over the year or more you have to wait to actually run it? I mean, it's been, let's see, I started Tyranny of Dragons in January. So it's been going on nine months now, you know, that I've been waiting and we're halfway through the campaign. So even if we kept going with it, it'd probably be another nine months before we actually got to the end. And the players are probably going to get bored too. A year is a really long time to be pursuing one plot with your character. And, and you feel like, like you only know this one dimension of your character, right? It's like my character has been doing this thing for the whole life of the character. And I've played from first to 15th level. And I don't know anything else about my character when he's not out fighting dragons or whatever. And as time goes on, the GM is going to feel more and more constrained like he can't really do what he wants because he's tied to this plot. And as time goes on, the players are going to feel more and more constrained because they're limited by this linear story in this published plot. And again, even the greatest ideas, assuming the campaign's even based on this phenomenal awesome idea, which they're not always, but even the greatest of these ideas can get old after that kind of time spent pursuing them. So imagine how quickly a more mediocre, a mediocre. <laughs> so imagine how more quickly a mediocre idea is going to get old, right? And another reason that I'm not really into these published campaigns anymore is it doesn't really feel like our campaign. In the end, you're playing some stranger's campaign, not your GM's. And if you're not digging the story, it's hard or even impossible to know whether it's the story as written that you don't like and it's a fault of the product or if it's the way your GM is presenting it. It's kind of hard to know. And, and so <laughs> you've gamed with this GM for a year and you're not even sure if you like this GM because you haven't seen any of his material yet. Maybe the sessions were boring just because the adventure sucks. Maybe the GM's awesome, who knows? So, you know, what am I gonna do about this? What, what are my options? You know, let's say I am a very busy person and, you know, the big draw to me of a published campaign is theoretically it's gonna save me time. Now, I would argue that it doesn't really save you much time. A published adventure, I think will save you time. If you're talking like a one shot or a short adventure, I think that will save you time. But when you're talking about a campaign, that's going to go from level one to level 15 in D&D terms. Preparing for that and planning for that and making that whole thing work is a lot of work. And I think at the end of the day, it's not going to save you any time at all. You're just going to spend your time doing different things. So, you know, one thing I could do is instead of buying and trying to run a whole campaign, I could instead look for shorter published adventures. And, you know, this is a great alternative because you can string multiple shorter adventures together. And you know, that's what we did before we had published campaigns. And this is great because you're not gonna be doing the same old tired thing for 15 levels or whatever the equivalent is in your game, right? Every few weeks you get to tackle something new and you can also have downtime in between those adventures, which is another big problem with published campaigns, is there's usually not a lot of time for downtime. It's like Tyranny of Dragons, there's really zero chance for downtime. And, you know, I tried to add some into the campaign, but you're kind of stretching things. It's like, okay, my character is out saving the world. There's this looming threat to everything I hold dear, but I'm going to take a break from that and run my business for a month. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Right? Like, okay, there goes suspension of disbelief. It just flew out the window because that's just stupid, right? That would never happen. But on the other hand, if we power through the campaign with no downtime, then in in-world time, the campaign will probably take a matter of weeks or months. And does it make sense that you started out this first level nobody and ended up this 15th level practically demigod character in like a matter of weeks or months? That doesn't make any sense either. Also, if you're getting separate adventures and putting them together into a larger campaign, 
you can more tailor that campaign to the PCs, even though you're still using published material. As you game together, you're gonna get more and more of a feel for the kind of adventures they like. And you can choose your future adventures accordingly, right? So if you're playing with a group of people and they really get into like intrigue and political stuff and interacting with NPCs, then you can start looking for future adventures with this group that focuses on that kind of play style. Or if you have a group where they just really like heroic combat and stuff, you can look for adventures that, that feature that. You can also, if you're using shorter published adventures, at any time, go off on your own and do your own thing and start running your own adventures. And if you suddenly get this burr up your ass that you've got this idea for this cool adventure of your own that you want to run, you can wait until the end of the current adventure you're on to do it. And you're not going to have to wait that long because it's a shorter adventure. Or you could just do it now. And even if you throw out the rest of this adventure you bought because you came up with something cooler, it's less of a loss because, you know, maybe that adventure costs you 10 bucks instead of 50 bucks, right? So I've done this before in the past where I started out with maybe one or two published little adventures to kind of get things going. And as I'm running the published adventures, I'm putting in my own little side plots and things and pulling in PC backgrounds that organically lead into my own adventures once we're through with the published stuff. And this is a great way to jumpstart a new campaign if you don't have a lot of ideas in the beginning of what you want to do or you're just not sure what you want to do. And let's say you're running published adventures mainly because of time issues and then something happens in your life and now suddenly you have more free time to devote to gaming, it's a lot easier to move into your own stuff now that you have the time to do it if you're just running shorter published adventures than if you're in the middle of some huge published campaign. And finally, you know, individual published adventures, shorter adventures are a lot easier to run than a published campaign and they also take a lot less prep time. Now, another thing you could do is you could just do your own thing, right? I could just take the plunge and run my own campaign from the beginning. And, you know, if you're if you're going to do this, only do the world building you absolutely need for each session. Right. Don't build the whole world. Just build the little bit that the players need to do the thing that you want to do. And then you can build from there as time goes on. Right. And, you know, this is really good advice if time is an issue for you, which probably most of us listening to this show, time is an issue for us, you know, unless you're lucky enough to be, you know, a high school or a college student you've got a million things to juggle and even I was pretty busy in college but yeah somehow I found a lot of time to game (laughs) probably because I was skipping too many classes shame on me so you know just do the world building you absolutely need for that session and then anything else that you need that comes up in the session you can just come up with something on the fly and don't be afraid to ask the players for help with this for ideas or, or whatever you know if uh they want to go into some building in your town that you have no idea what it is and nothing like comes right away ask your players hey what do you think's in here and go with the best idea now another idea i had and and this leads to the the title of the episode choose your own adventure path it's it's kind of a play on words with the old uh, choose your own adventure books i maybe i shouldn't say old maybe they still exist i don't know i haven't seen one since i was a kid but i don't read kids books so that might be why um (laughs) But, you know, it'd be super cool. I mean, this is a pipe dream. It'll never happen. But it'd be super cool if someone out there, like, say, Wizards, would put out a published campaign in multiple volumes, kind of like what Pathfinder does. Only in this campaign, they figure out, okay, there's these three major decision points in the campaign where the PCs have to choose a direction and that choice is going to affect the rest of the campaign and instead of being like your average published campaign where they get railroaded into a choice so that you can keep running the adventure like maybe there's three options right so they put out a book for each option so if your party went down path a here's part two for you if your party went down path b here's part two for you and if your party went down path c here's part two for you I don't think that'll ever happen because, again, they're, they're going to be printing books that, you know, not everybody's going to want. 
but they're already doing that anyway with the adventure pads they're printing books that not everybody's going to want so i don't know maybe it could happen but that would be really cool but that's kind of what we do as gms right or at least that's kind of what i do when i'm when i'm running a game or a campaign is you know i only plan so far ahead and i get to a point where i'm like okay i don't really know what's going to happen after this point because the pcs are going to make a choice here and I don't know what they're going to choose. So I'll wait until they make that choice and then I'll decide what comes next. Right. So I think if they could do the, you know, choose your own adventure path kind of thing, that might help mitigate some of these problems, but I don't think it would eliminate all of them. So another possibility, another way to go about this is you could still run your published campaigns, but just skip the boring shit. Now, unfortunately, both D&D and Pathfinder published adventures and their campaigns feature far more chump encounters, what I call chump encounters, than interesting encounters. And by chump encounters, I mean encounters that are either no real challenge to the players, they're just kind of easy, or they're boring, they're not unique, they're uninspired, you know, things like that. You, you know what I'm talking about. Like when you're looking at a published adventure, you know, there's the encounters where you're like, oh, this is so cool. I can't wait to run this. And then there's the encounters that are just kind of eh, whatever. So those are the chump encounters. They don't really matter because you're not excited about them, right? And if you're not excited about them, your players probably aren't going to be excited about them. So I think these are piled into adventures like this to deplete resources and kind of fill in the blanks between the encounters that actually matter and kind of give this sense of realism of like, well, not everything you encounter is like the big bad evil guy at the end, right? There's other things in the world. And so we're going to have this kind of nod to realism by having you have to deal with things that don't really matter. But my question is, why run an encounter that doesn't matter? That just seems stupid to me. The more I think, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've done it <laughs> far more times than I could count. But when I think about it, I'm like, why Why do that? First of all, why print an <laughs> encounter that doesn't matter? Why are you putting it in your products, Wizards, Paizo? Okay, I guess we know why, but please stop. You know, make every encounter awesome. But, you know, if you have a product and there's this boring encounter in it, don't run it, or at least don't run it as it's written. So you can skip through the boring stuff and focus on the parts of the adventure that are actually interesting and actually matter, right? Now, when Will Johnson was on, he had some great ideas on how to handle these chump encounters that he got from various 13th Age adventures and, and how they have you handle it. That was really cool and really an eye-opener for me. So you can hear us discuss these ideas that he was talking about on episode 39 which is called running adventure paths part three and i will have that linked in the show notes as well at starwalkerstudios.com so in a nutshell some of some of the possibilities is you could just skip those encounters you could just not do them right or you could rewrite the encounters to make them more interesting and or challenging you could instead of just running the encounter in the normal way that you would ask the PCs how they handle it. Say, hey, you guys come upon this thing. This is the encounter. How do you think your characters would handle it? Like, just tell me, we're not gonna, we're not gonna roll, roll dice. Just tell me how you think you would handle it. And then narrate the results based on what they tell you. And if it's really necessary or important to the adventure, you could even deplete some of their resources. You could say, hey, knock off some hit points or mark off some spells or, or whatever. You could even, if you wanted to, make a table of interesting complications that could happen in those encounters and then roll to see if there's a complication. You know, you have the PCs describe, well, how do you get past this? And then you're like, okay, I'm going to roll and see if maybe there's a chance that something went wrong. And then I have some ideas of things that could go wrong. Or you could even have the PCs roll some kind of skill check for that. And then if there's a complication, go with that because it'll be interesting. If not, just use one of these other methods to just blow past the encounter and keep going. Now, I think that you can go through any published campaign you have and fairly easily identify the encounters that are actually important to the story and or are really cool and interesting or just plain scary. They'll be the ones that you're kind of excited about, right? And you're like, oh, this is cool. Those encounters you, you want to keep for sure. Um, and then distill the campaign down to just those encounters and speed through the rest some way, shape, or form. However, at this point, we again have to wonder, 
is it worth the money to buy a published campaign if you're going to be throwing 50% or more of it out or kind of speeding through it and not really doing it the way they want you to? And, you know, you've got to answer that for yourself. Personally, I don't think it's worth it, which is why one of the reasons I won't be running them anymore. If all I need is some ideas to get going, and usually that's all I need, then there are countless free sources of that kind of thing on the internet. I don't have to pay for it. There are also, uh, or there are many great gaming blogs with all kinds of adventure ideas free for the taking. So speaking of that, you know, we're all game masters here, or at the very least, we're all players of RPG games. So let's, uh, let's pool our resources and put our brains together and let's, you know, make a resource for all of us for adventure ideas or even whole adventures. So if you know of a good like RPG blog or website where there's good material that you enjoy and find valuable as far as getting ideas for adventures or even whole adventures or NPCs or encounters or anything like that, let me know. Send me a link to that resource. Uh, you can email me at gamemastersjourney at gmail.com. Uh, you could leave a comment in the show notes at starwalkerstudios.com slash gamemastersjourney slash 55. Or you can leave a comment on this episode's post in the Game Master's Journey Google Plus community. And I'll have all those linked in the show notes. I ask that you do one of those three things. You know, don't just send me a tweet or send me a post on Google Plus because that stuff is really hard to keep track of. If you put it in the comments for this episode or the Google Plus post on the community for this episode or you email it to me, those are three ways that I can kind of keep track of everything. And then what I'll do is I'll compile this stuff and I'll release it as a blog post on the website so all of you can, can go and use these resources. So I'd really prefer that you not just send me a link and in addition to the link, you know, tell me why you like this site or this blog or whatever, or what you like about it, or maybe recommend specific topics or whatever. And also let me know if it's specific to a particular game. I mean, obviously we prefer things that can be used for any game easily, but you know, I don't want to like discount things that are specific to certain games. As long as, you know, if it's some obscure game that hardly anyone plays, I don't know how useful that is. But if it's a game like D&D or Shadowrun or Pathfinder or Star Wars that lots and lots of people play, then then that's still a valuable resource for people playing that game. So yeah, you know, get get those to me and uh, I'll collect them for a while. And, and then I'll put them up on the site for everybody. And, you know, that's something that we can also add to over time. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this flight of the Obsidian Monolith and listening to my ramblings about published campaigns. Uh, I would love to hear from you, um, your opinions on this. Do you run published campaigns? Do you like running published campaigns? Have you had similar thoughts as to what I'm having? And, and just, you know, what do you think about it? So shoot me an email at gamemastersjourney at gmail.com. You can also find me on Google Plus. Just search for Lex Starwalker. And you can follow me on Twitter at Lex Starwalker. Visit the website, starwalkerstudios.com slash Game Master's Journey. And there you can find the show notes and lots of great stuff in the show notes. I'll have the other episodes I mentioned linked. All the ways to contact me are there. There's the Patreon and donate buttons if you'd like to support the show. I really appreciate everybody who supports the show. You know, it's, it's not free for me to do this. <laughs> And I am I am more than happy to provide uh, free content. But, you know, if, if no one uh, pays for it, then, you know, it's not sustainable forever, forever. So I really appreciate the people that are willing to pay for content that they value. Also, you can find the iTunes and Stitcher buttons, and that will take you directly to the show on those platforms. So you can subscribe there. Also, if you'd like to leave a review, I really appreciate that. 
And at the bottom of the show notes, you can find a link to our Google Plus community, which again, every time I release a new episode, I make a post there for that episode. So that's one of the ways uh, that you could let me know any resources that you have. Uh, you could comment on that post and just uh, connect with other listeners and gamers there. We also now, Starwalker Studios, we now have a newsletter that you can sign up for. So you can find the sign up form for that at the bottom of the show notes as well. And that will be a monthly newsletter. I'm not gonna spam your inbox with a bunch of crap. I'm gonna send something out once a month. It's for the studio as a whole. So I have a little bit about each show in it and it'll just be another way to keep you up to date on what's going on. You can also find a link to my YouTube channel. I've got lots of actual play there. And you can find a link to a free 30-day trial of Audible books, courtesy of Game Master's Journey. You'll get one free book and uh, definitely helps out the show if you try that out. And my Amazon referral link that if you could use that when you shop on Amazon, I would greatly appreciate it. And that's a way that you can uh, support the show without actually paying money. or at least paying money that you weren't going to pay anyway, right? So I hope that you have a chance to play your favorite RPG this week, whether you're running your own adventure or a published adventure or a published campaign. I will be back next week with another episode of Game Master's Journey. Until then, game on. This has been a Starwalker Studios production, your source for quality gaming and hobby podcasts. This episode's music provided by Cloudwalker, Renfield, Transboy, and Ish. Please see the show notes for more details at starwalkerstudios.com slash Game Master's Journey.